G'day guys, welcome back to another tier maker on the True Footy channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at all the Rising Star nominations from 2020, the previous season. There's 18 of them. I'm going to rank them into different tiers. But before we get into it, I do have to tell you that this video is made in collaboration with NordVPN, the world's leading VPN provider. If you don't know already, a VPN provides you online privacy and anonymity by allowing you to make a private internet connection from a public network. It allows you to connect to different servers across different countries as though you're in that country, which gives you a heap of potential benefits. The biggest benefit to which is getting around things like geo-blocking, which, you know, some servers and platforms or even video games, you can't actually access them if you're not from the right country. For footy fans out there, KO Sports is a big one if you're overseas or if you live overseas. We know that KO Sports is only catered for an Australian audience. So if you're outside the country, you can simply connect to an Australian server through NordVPN and you can access things like KO Sports. The other benefits include certain video games are only available in certain countries. You simply connect to be in that country, you can get the game or you know some things are actually discounted in different countries like NBA League Pass. If you're aboard the Australian Netflix, simply switch servers and you can access a different catalog of shows. NordVPN has a ton of variety of servers. You've got over 5,300 across 59 different countries to choose from. Now, a common question that gets put towards VPNs are, you know, speed and bandwidth throttling. Well, this is the fastest VPN out there confirmed by all the tests and all your traffic is encrypted. So your service provider can't possibly throttle your bandwidth. It's safe, it's easy to use. And beyond all that, you're getting a massive bargain because with TrueFooty, you can actually get 70% off NordVPN service. Simply go to nordvpn.com forward slash truefooty and use the coupon code truefooty or check out the link in the description and it will take you straight there. Not only would you be getting a great VPN service, you'd also be helping out truefooty. Thanks guys, let's get into the tier maker. All right guys, let's get into this tier maker. This is one I whipped up myself this morning and uh, yeah, just to clarify, we're taking you through the Rising Star nominees of the 2020 season. So there were only 18, of course, being a shortened season. Um, so there's one per round, which means this one will be pretty short. But I'll basically take you through how I rank these players as to how far they can go in their careers. In my personal opinion, obviously there's a lot of conjecture here. We don't know how good these players are going to be, but it's based on my impression. I'm just going to say these are the players I rank into these tiers. So I've gone with four tiers, as you can see on the screen. Uh, the top tier is superstar, elite, very good and decent and all, obviously all of these are positive because there's not a lot of negative things to say about these players. I don't think any of them are going to be a spud, which is probably the next the next tier down there. But um, anyone on this list is obviously got a bit about them if they've been recognized by a Rising Star nomination. Uh, so that's why the bottom tier is just decent. So without faffing around too much, let's get into it. Now, as you can see, there's a few Gold Coast names here. I think there's four Gold Coast nominees here and we're starting off with Noah Anderson, who is obviously pick two in the 2019 draft, famously after Matty Rao, they went together. Um, obviously hasn't quite, you know, looked quite as good as uh, Matty Rao, but he's also had some really good games. I think he had like 35 posies the other day. Uh, I'm gonna put him in an elite. I think he's gonna be a potentially elite midfielder, but uh, I'm gonna reserve the superstar status for uh, some of these other players. And I'll, I might even just move to the first superstar on this list that I can think of, and that's Max King. Already kicking bags as a forward for St. Kilda. You know, had an ACL issue, um, I think, in his draft year and then, you know, missed most, if not all. I think it was all of his debut season. So a bit of a later start for Max, but the fact that he's already showcasing his prodigious skill and his athleticism, he and Bean King are absolute superstars. So, um, yeah, I think Max King could be a future real, real elite key forward. And that's why he's a superstar. Someone who is decent, uh, you've probably got, I'm probably going to go two in a row here. You've got Connor, Connor Butterick. Um, he's a small defender from Gold Coast, about 175 centimeters. Kind of a lockdown style player, and you know because of that, really, it's hard to really put him and elevate him anywhere near a superstar potential. Um, I think just because of the nature he plays, but I think he's a good, solid player, dependable player. Uh, maybe I need to watch a bit more of him to put him higher, but frankly, I, I think he's a decent player and can definitely see him being a long-term AFL player as well. Same with young Curtis Taylor here, uh, drafted as a forward. I think he slid down the draft quite a lot the year he went. I think he was meant to go like in the teens and went like 45-ish off the top of my head. Um, so North kind of got a best steal there. He's looked pretty decent. Um, he's, he's quite a talented forward. I haven't watched him a lot this year. Looking at his stats, he hasn't actually registered a goal in four games yet this season. Although I think in his uh, third game of the year, he had 18 touches, 10 marks. So going all right. It's hard to really stand out in that North team. 
I think he's a decent player with potential to sort of up, go up this tier in future years. Now we need to sign someone for very good. Um, looking at the list, I am going to say maybe Lockie Scholl. Maybe you could say he's going to be elite in a few years. Again, this is not really just looking at how well they're playing right now because uh, Lockie Scholl is up there with <laughs> just about anyone on the, this list for you know how they're going this year. He's been really, really good. But as a sort of running halfback with really good skills, I think he's going to sort of settle in that very good position um, without being you know elite company with some of the, the players above so we'll keep moving through Mitch Georgiades is one I'm a fan of I think he's uh I don't want to say underrated he's got his own hype that's for sure but I think he I think he's a similar sort of almost level talent as Oscar Allen obviously I hope Oscar Allen ends up being the better player but Georgiades is sort of like a slightly undersized athletic key um maybe in the Gunston mold as well I think I think he's going to be an absolute stellar player so for now, I'm going to have him in superstar. Lukey Jackson, I'll say elite without being superstar. He's obviously possessed with the capabilities to, to move up to that superstar status. Um, and it's, it's so hard to judge a ruck this early. I think he got the Rising Star nomination today, as I record this. So he's obviously doing plenty right. I don't know if I just elevate him to elite yet. It's just so hard to project with rucks, but I can see him being definitely one of the better rucks of his generation, for sure. Jake Riccardi, he's a player I really enjoy watching. I'm going to put him in very good. I think uh, I think the Giants landed a good one there. He's a mature age pickup, so... Um, Again, a little bit older, I think, or maybe maybe it's only one or two years older than some of these guys. So he's got a bit of an, an advantage there. That's why he's he's playing pretty well. Um, not setting the world on fire, but I think a really good pickup, and uh, I think he's going to be a very good player. Maybe maybe closer to decent than elite for sure. But um, yeah, that's just the way I see it. I think he's got a lot of talent. Justin McInerney looks like a good midfielder for the Swans. Uh, for such a young guy, fighting plenty of the ball, looks good when he has it. Provides a bit of running carry and zip. I enjoy watching him play, but uh, I'm going to have him a tear down from your Noah Anderson types. Cosy Pickett. Gee, the D's did well here in that draft. Look, picking up uh, Trent Rivers and Cosy Pickett in the top 10. Cosy Pickett, they sort of uh, leapt on. I think he was meant to go maybe 20s and 30s. And then uh, right before the draft, there was talk he was going to bolt. And, and obviously, the D's pulled the trigger on him. And uh, while it is early days, um, he's kicked a bag of four at least once. Um, playing a pretty important role in the forward line of a team that is seven and zip at, as we record this video. A lot of elite potential there. That's where I'm going to have him. Elite as a small forward. Quaino I'll have is very good. Could potentially be elite. Maybe I just need to see him play more. I think he's a really, really good player, to be honest. I think he's a really good talent. But again, being a running halfback, if he could add another dimension to his game and potentially, you know, be a dual role sort of defender mid, that would be what elevates him to elite. But I think for now, I think very good is very fair. Isaac Rankin, hard not to put him elite. I think uh, Cosy Pickett's looking like the more accomplished of the two so far. But uh, the, the pure talent that Isaac Rankin has, it's, it's bets like and I'll be surprised if he doesn't become one of the best small forwards in the game on his day. So is he overhyped? Quite possibly, but uh, he's also capable of doing silly things on a football field. So I'll put him in a lead. Next up, we got Matty Rao. How can you put him anywhere other than superstar um, for a guy to be getting three Brownlow vote games, multiple three Brownlow vote games uh, in you know his first four games. And he's obviously battled injuries. I think he's only played five games of AFL. Uh, but what we've seen, we've really liked. And uh, it's hard not to say he would be in Brownlow contention during the peak years of his career. I think it's fair to say he's a superstar. I'm also going to nominate Caleb Sarong here. Um, I think he's sort of in the same school of that Lockie Neal type, that small in and under midfielder, absolute bull, super competitive, got a bit of a mongrel about him, really like watching him play, and geez, the Dockers have a really good young midfield there with Brayshaw and Chera as well, so yeah, I think Caleb Sarong will be a superstar. Starsevich I'm a fan of, I'll put his elite, he's a good sort of utility, plays uh, multiple roles, good skill, he's hard at it, Good. he's pretty athletic as well, um, I'm a big fan, would love to lure him home to West Coast, I don't think that's going to happen, but uh, yeah, I think I think he's a very good player without being elite. Now, this is maybe a little bit harsh on Sam Sturt, I think he's been decent, I actually quite like Sam Sturt, we've just seen such a small body of work so far. Can't quite cement a spot in that Fremantle side. I, th I know he's had his injury woes as well. He's Again, he's 189 centimeter, sort of medium forward again. So, you know, a little bit vertically challenged. I think if he's about 193, 194, um, then he'd be sort of elevating himself again to really, really high potential. I think he's going to be a good long-term player at AFL level. Uh, I just think for now, from what he's shown so far, I'm going to put him in decent. Tom Green will put him very good. Again, it's hard. I think feel like he could be a slow burn, sort of a big bodied inside mid. People pe compared him to Paddy Cripps and maybe maybe that was unfair because, you know, we look at Paddy Cripps, what he was doing in his first and second year and it, uh, it eclipses what most people were doing in their first and second year. So uh, there's a bit of expectation on Tom Green. What I've seen so far, it looks pretty good. Look, maybe he will be elite, to be honest. I'm not too sure, but uh, I'll, I'll put him in very good for now. Finally, 
I'm going to put Will Day in elite, and uh, I think he is going to be a really good sort of uh, general of the back line at the Hawks there. He uh, accumulating possession in the back half and using it really well. Really skillful. Again, the Hawks kind of plucked him a little bit. I think he was meant to go 20s, 30s, if you'd believe all the, the pre-draft sort of speculation. And Hawthorne plucked the guy they want, uh, as they so often do. And uh, I think that's looking like a genius pickup in hindsight. Big fan of Will Day. Hopefully he gets on the park soon. So there you have it, guys. That is my ranking of the 2020 Rising Star nominations. If you want me to keep doing this and go through 2019, let me know in the comments because uh, I'll do it because it's quite a lot of fun. Uh, just going through it again, my four superstars, Max King, Georgiatis, Matty Rao, and Caleb Sarong. Caleb Sarong was, of course, the Rising Star winner. I didn't even mention that, uh, but uh, that kind of, you know, legitimizes my claim of him being a superstar talent. Uh, then you've got the elites, Jackson, Anderson, Cozzy Pickett, Isaac Rankin, Will Day. Before, in the middle, you've got Lockie Scholl, Jake McCarty, Justin McInerney, Quainor, Stasovic, and Tom Green. And then finally, and this is no disrespect to those players because, you know, I think they're good enough to make the grade for sure, Butterick, Curtis Taylor, and Sam Sturt. That concludes this tier maker, guys. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought of my opinions, what your opinions are, and again, whether I should keep doing this tier maker series. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I would really appreciate it if you do take the two seconds it takes to subscribe. I'm trying to grow this channel big time this year and really appreciate your support. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one.